Hello, this is Squadaloo back with another part in the ongoing tutorial series on how to make a Mario Kart 8 custom track. I know it's been a long time. I've kind of posted that I technically recorded most of this episode once in the past and ran into some issues, which I'll probably talk about later uh, if they come up or when I reach the point in which they may have come up. Um, there's also just been a number of personal projects, vacations, uh, and just other things going on in life that have prevented this from continuing, so I'm sorry that it's taken so long. Uh, but beyond that, let's go ahead and jump right into the subject matter for this episode. Last time we did the off-road portions of the track, uh, and this time we're going to be doing both the enemy paths and the item paths. I know in a previous episode I said I was going to try and tackle one subject per episode, but really these two are very heavily linked, uh, so I'm just going to tackle them both in this episode. Um, so for now we've got our BML open in Track Studio. Uh, I'm going to click on enemy paths, click on our expand our path to zero here. Um, Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and click over here on the right, group zero, and click remove to remove our existing path. Uh, and then I'm going to click enemy paths again over here. And kind of talked about it in a previous episode, but I'll probably go over it again now and with a little more detail. Um, first of all, we're going to want to click on this view over here. And well, actually, no, we're going to want to make sure that this drop to collision here is checked uh, and then we'll hold the alt key and simply click on the middle of the road to place a point and then with the previous point still selected we'll just hold alt and click a little further down the road and we're basically going to want to just keep doing this along the middle of our track um, and when we get to turns uh, you'll want to place them fairly frequently. We don't need to be too much here. Um, and before I get too much further, I should probably explain what we're actually looking at here. So basically what's going on here is we're laying down the paths that our enemies will follow, but they're not just going to follow the direct middle of this path. So what this sort of yellow sphere is, that's around this orange sphere in the middle, is sort of, that's the area where the enemies will sort of spread out along this path. Um, in general, it seems like they'll spread a little further than the size of the yellow. Um, so you will always want to make sure that the yellow sphere is well within the area that you want the drivers to drive in because otherwise they may just drive straight off the edge of the path um, and if you need to change that at any point for any reason you can simply click on any point and then you would go over here to the scale where it is set to 200 and change each of these points here to whatever you need it to be um, I'm going to leave that at 200 because um, it seems pretty okay for our size here um, and I will basically just continue tracing this path for now around our main road, and eventually we're going to talk, things are going to get a little more complicated when we get to the glide ramp and when we go to set up shortcuts, but for now you pretty much just leave the last point selected and then every little bit along the road, place a few more points, and as I said earlier, you'll want to place more on the turns. Uh, the reason being, uh, if things are spread out too much on the turns, like say I do something like this here, um, the problem you're going to run into, it's actually, it seems to be less of a problem with the enemies than it is with the items, but basically there's a chance that the AI will kind of It'll be easier to explain when I get to items, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So, just for now, basically take my word for it, and then when I get to items, I'll kind of explain it a little better. Um, 
because it matters a lot more with items. But for now, let's just go ahead and keep placing our points. Uh, and there's not really a ton to talk about here uh, in terms of strategy here, other than just keep alt-clicking your way through the whole route of the track. Um, at least not until we get to the glider ramp. Place one there. Uh, for ramps, I tend to put one point near the very edge of the ramp and then one a little further away from the landing area. Um, I'm not 100% sure if this is true necessarily for Mario Kart 8, but I know it was an issue I was having with Mario Kart Wii. Um, if you did something like this, the AI would, like, I don't think it, it may not be an issue for this track um, because this gap is so short. But basically, the AI will try and go from one point inside of this big sphere to one point inside this other big sphere. And if you have, like, a big drop, I don't know, more, say, something like this, basically, the AI, if it goes off this ramp, it's going to need to go inside of this sphere. So it's going to be, it's basically going to have to either slam on the brakes and go straight down or overshoot it, turn around, and come back to reach this point before continuing. Um, so that's why I tend to, if there's a little ramp area, just move the next sphere out a little bit so that they don't really try and do something stupid like that. Um, but yeah, just basically, if it's a straightaway, you don't need too many, uh, unless you're going to be doing split paths. Which we'll, again, I'll kind of cover when we get to the shortcut. Um, but I'm just going to do... Yeah, this one's a little was a little too spread out when we get to the items, probably. But I'm just going to keep doing something like this. One's also got a little bored inside. And the thing is, if you need to change the size of multiple items at the same time, you can select multiple points. If you click on, say, point 43 and hold shift and click on point 50 here, you'll select everything in between them. And so if I change the scale like we were earlier, it'll change the scale out of all of them. Again, we don't really need to do that right now, but I figured that'll probably just be easier to explain. Um, but we're just going to, once again, keep clicking until we get to our... Actually, we will kind of need it right here. Uh, we're going to want the AI basically to drive over the glider ramp. So I'm going to leave a point here well before the glider ramp. And then my next point, I'm going to leave at the tip of the glider ramp. And the glider ramp itself, actually we'll do it at the base of the glider ramp. The glider ramp itself is pretty narrow. So maybe maybe even a little thinner than that. We'll go 90. So then the racers will kind of narrow themselves down so that they reach the glider ramp. Uh, and once you change the size, if you have that selected and then you alt click again, it'll keep that same size. So all the next points will be 90, or at least that point will be. And then I'm going to just place a few on the ground here. Uh, we'll need to adjust those in a little bit, or basically right now. Uh, but sorry, I was over talking to myself. Um, we're going to, in order to finish the loop here, uh, you're going to want to click on the last point in your loop here. And then I'm going to hold shift click on the first point, and then press F. And you'll know you've done it in the correct order because the arrow will be going from the last point back to the first point. And so there we have one full lapse worth of points. Um, but we do need to make a few adjustments here. Um, so we have the glider ramp. And as I said earlier, the enemies will try and go from inside the sphere of influence to somewhere inside the next sphere. But if it's a glider ramp, that means they're basically just going to have to try and dive bomb in order to reach this sphere, which we don't really want. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to make all these bigger again by kind of doing what I said earlier. You don't necessarily have to select them over here. You can click on one and hold shift and click on each individual one as well. I'm going to raise those back up to 200 in size. Uh, I'm also going to raise them all up into the air 
because we are doing gliding here. Maybe something like... I don't remember what my glide path looks like. Okay, we'll want that one higher up in the air. Um, so yeah, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to hide the glide pads again. Maybe lower that one a little bit. Lower that one a little bit. Yeah, so the primary route here will be that the AI will want to go off the glider ramp and then they'll glide along. Um, but if they get hit by an item, they'll be stuck because they can't really reach these spheres again and if, if they're on the ground. So what we need to do is I'm going to go back here at the beginning of our glide section. And I'm going to click somewhere, say, here on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and make this 200 immediately. Um, and I'm going to place a few on the ground, kind of in between these glider ramp ones. Uh, actually, probably here. Probably just two there, honestly, is probably good. Uh, and then once again, I'll with this last one selected, I'll hold Shift click this last item here, and then press F. So now we have two paths, one through the air and one on the ground. Now it's kind of time to talk about the priority option over here. Um, by default, everything has a priority of default, uh, shockingly, um, which basically means if you have a junction like we have here, the AI, if everything is set to default, will basically, as far as I'm aware, flip a coin and go, either I'm going to go with the top route or I'm going to go to the bottom route here. Um, now, because we have a glider ramp here, we don't. We would prefer for them to just glide um, and only take this bottom route if they fall from gliding. Um, so what we can do is, first of all, I'm going to actually link these uh i'm gonna link this point to uh let's go all the way up here this point to here as well um something like that and what i'm gonna do is for these two bottom items along this bottom route I'm going to select both of them by holding shift and clicking on both. I'm going to change the priority from default to safety fallback. Uh, one of the great things about Mario Kart 8 over Mario Kart Wii is basically it's it's a lot easier to handle situations like this. Um, because basically when you set a, something as priority as safety fallback, it tells the game like, hey, you should try and go the default route. But if for some reason you fall off of the default route, take the safety fallback route that you've ended up at. And so if they get hit by an item up here, they should be smart enough to go, okay, I'm hit by an item, I can't reach this point, but I can't reach this point, so I'm going to go this bottom route. And so they're not just going to get confused. Uh, and so that should handle our glider ramp section there. This one we don't really care about because if they get hit out of the air after they've already gone through this point, it the next point is the correct point anyway, so we don't really care about having a safety fallback there. Um, but anyways, that covers our first sort of little bit of trickiness with the enemy points. Uh, the second one is we want an AI, if they get, if they get a boosting item, we're going to want them to boost across a little grassy patch such as this. Uh, and the way we do that is Let's click on something just before the shortcut, uh, let's say this point. And then we'll click on that and then we're going to hold Alt and click to start our shortcut route. Uh, we're definitely going to want it a lot short, smaller than 200, so I'm going to go 50. Uh, and I am going to set the priority here to shortcut speed required. And so that basically tells the game uh by default you should always go the default route but if you have some sort of item which gives you boosted speed such as a mushroom or a star you are allowed to take this shortcut route 
And so with that at the very beginning, we don't need to reset any of the rest of these um, because the starting branch is already set to shortcut speed required. So you should just be good to set the rest of these to default. And we're just going to have that cut through the grass here. And much like before, we'll use shift click to click on the end of our shortcut and unite it there. And so that should serve as a little shortcut for the AI. Uh, and I, as you may have noticed, there are some other priority items. I'm going to be honest, the other two we haven't talked about are shortcut and bullet bill branch off. I honestly don't know what either do. Shortcut, I thought because it was shortcut and not shortcut speed required, I thought that meant that it was a shortcut that doesn't require a speed item, like, say, uh, the leaves at the end of Cloudtop Cruise. And it's sort of the last turn there. It's a shortcut, but it's not a speed shortcut. I thought that it might have something to do with that. Uh, but I checked, and I was unable to find a single vanilla track with a shortcut situation that I thought that might apply to uh, where it was actually used. So I don't know what that does. Bullet Bill branch off. I thought that meant that it was a route that only the Bullet Bill could go. Um, but every time I tried to use it, it seemed like the rest of the AI just treated it as default and just started driving through the grass. Uh, so I was never really able to figure out what those, either of those two did. Um, so I apologize if you need something like that, but yeah, that's what I got. So that should actually be it here. I'm going to go ahead and save. That should be it for our enemy routes. Now we begin the long, tedious mind-numbing process of creating the item paths. And here's what you're going to do. I'm going to click on item paths here on the left. And then we go up to this nice convert button and say from enemy paths. We click it and they're all there. And that's it uh, for creating the actual paths. That's kind of why I said I was worried more about the items when I was doing the turns than the enemies. Uh, and as I said, it feels like it's a little more important to have more points on turns for items than enemies and the reason for that is how red shells work uh, i honestly don't know the exact science behind red shells but basically uh i'm gonna go ahead and save and then i'm just gonna let's just make an example here of like i don't know something like this like say we have too few of points with items. Now, something like this may actually technically work uh, for a red shell if the racer it's trying to hit is, let's say, I'm going to go up to objects, and I'm just going to use coin as my, well, maybe not a coin. Let's change this, which actually we're going to need to do this anyway. So I'm going to click on coin up here. And then I'm going to search for item box. I'm just going to want this normal item box. Uh, we're going to need to place items anyway, so I may as well do that now. This base, Basically, this drop-down controls if I'm in map objects mode and I hold alt and click the road. That controls what object gets placed when I do that. Um, but let's just say we have a racer down the road this way, right there and somebody back here fires a shell. This is probably going to work fine because the red shell is going to reach this point and then it's going to try and go straight to this point, follow the rest of these points and hit this driver. The problem we have is when we have, say, this driver here and the driver chasing him here, because then this driver is going to fire a red shell and the red shell is going to hit this point and go, okay, the next, between my next point, or between here and the next point is the driver, or is the racer I need to hit. So I'm going to stop going down the middle of the road and I'm going to turn and try and hit them. But in the time it's going to take for the red shell to reach this point, this driver may be like down here. And so then it's going to try and take a straight line. And if you just keep going along there, there's a chance that the line that the red shell takes is just going to go straight off the inside of the curve. Um, and so that's if you 
uh, run into situations. It happened a lot more in Mario Kart Wii than Mario Kart 8, um, where if you have like a really tight turn and you have a red shell chasing you, if the red shell hits the inside wall, it's because of this sort of problem. It does happen in Mario Kart 8, but it seems to happen way less often than in Mario Kart Wii in other past Mario Karts. Um, but that's why we want more paths like this. Um, because the more we have, the smoother, like, the less of a chance of something like that happening. Because there's the next point in the item path is going to be sooner than where the driver is. Um, so hopefully that made sense. Um, but anyways, we do need to clean up a few things here with our item pads now that we've created this. Uh, up here, um, we need to select the three points that are floating in the air. Uh, actually, I'm also going to select the one before it. I don't know if that really matters. I just do it to be safe. Uh, select all these points for our glider path. And then over here on the right, we need to change hover to has hover. And so that will allow I read items like red shells to just fly through this section and hit people using gliders. Uh, much like before, I'm going to go ahead and click these bottom two and change the item priority to safety fallback. I'm going to go to the start of our shortcut here and change the item priority to shortcut. And so that should handle the item priority stuff. Uh, now there are some other items, or there's some other bits here which we need to talk about. Um, which is search area. So search area you'll see has small search and big search. Basically what happens is I kind of said when I was doing my example, like, uh, like say I have my, let me go back to the map, map item. Say I have a racer right here and a red shell right here. Now, this yellow sphere of influence, there is actually a search area for items that goes beyond that area. And it's kind of invisible. Um, and so basically, the red shell will search for any enemies that it can hit from this point. And if you set it to big search, that search area is big, basically. Basically, you'd want to use big search if you have a wide swath of road or drivable area that you just have one item path going through the middle of. Um, but most of the time, small area will suffice. In fact, it's probably... Small area may be a little too big, and I suspect that was what was causing my problem when I tried to record this tutorial the first time. Um, but... Other than that, that should pretty well, on paper, cover item paths. So I'll go ahead and save. Uh, and the last thing we need, of course, is item blocks to get items from. Um, so I'm going to be doing this in with the Mario Kart Wii setup. Just or Mario Kart Wii, Jesus, uh, the Wii U setup. Um, but I will kind of show the interface how the double item box work. Uh, you're just not going to see a visual change here until we switch over to Deluxe, um, which I'm probably not going to do for this episode. Uh, but I will show how to set up double item boxes for Deluxe. Um, but anyways, as I said before, we are on map objects. I've already switched this up here to item box so that all we have to do from here is wherever we want to place item boxes, we just hold Alt and then click along the road. Uh, technically, if you want them all in a row uh, a little more cleanly, you can place one, say, let's delete these. Basically, if you want them to be guaranteed in a straight line, you can place one and then click on it and hold Control D, and it'll create a duplicate, and that way you can drag along here. Now, I don't remember if I talked about this in the coin episode, or when I placed the coins, um, but the coins and the item boxes 
Uh, visually, in the editor, they look like they're stuck in the ground, but when you go into the game, they'll actually be at the proper height off of the ground. Um, so just keep in mind, if you're placing like item boxes or coins in air, um, they'll actually be more like up here. The coins will, and the item boxes and things. Um, general rule of thumb, which is not a perfect rule. Uh, I forgot which course off the top of my head breaks this rule, but there was one I remember fairly recently noticing does. It seems like a general rule of thumb, though, in Mario Kart 8, course, most Mario Kart 8 courses, is that the first set of item boxes in 8 Deluxe does not have any double item boxes. Um, and generally, I don't know, I always try to have item boxes like every 10 seconds. Uh, oh, I should probably... Yeah, we might as well just put a few... We don't really need too many on this course because it's so small, but I'm just going to place another row here. Uh, for anti-gravity stuff, I go up into the settings here and make sure rotate from collision is checked. So that way when I alt click on the road here, it automatically rotates the item box to match the road rotation. And I did a terrible job placing those. Straight. Um, ugh, yeah, really bad. Let me just redo all that. Let me just use the duplicate method. Because I hate how badly I place those. But yeah, very simple matter. That's basically all there is to item boxes. Use the moving tool to place. Or if you duplicate, you can use the movement tool. Otherwise, you can just alt click your way through. Um, now, if we're in 8 Deluxe, which I'm not right now, but if we were, you simply, you can click on randomize double item boxes. Um, what that does is it literally just takes all the item boxes and randomly flips some of them to have this is double flag down here set to 1. Uh, I highly recommend not using this because usually there's a rhyme and a reason to where the double item boxes are placed. As I said, there tends to be, in most tracks, none in the first set. Uh, and elsewhere, they tend to be more out of the way, like on the outside of turns. Um, but basically, you would just click on any item box you want to be double, and you would just change this double flag to one. And if this were set up for 8 Deluxe, it will actually change it in the editor to be a double item box. Um, we don't have that set up right now, so I can't show it. Uh, maybe a, a later episode. But that's pretty much the bulk of actually setting this up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to go ahead and copy all the files off screen here get the track into Mario Kart 8, and then fire that up, make sure it all works, and we'll meet you then. All right, so we've gotten it patched into the game like we have in the past. It's just a matter of copying the files into the graphics packs, like I mentioned in previous tutorials. Uh, I verified it works, so I shouldn't need to um, sort of make any oh i forgot this and let's go back to the tutorial phase uh adjustments um i did confirm that the issue that i was having that caused this video to get postponed for so long is still occurring which i thought it would i'm kind of glad that it is because otherwise i would have completely lost any sanity over it um but we'll talk about that in a little bit um but first uh, we haven't really done a versus race because we haven't had any AI, so now is the time for that. Uh, so we're going to go into versus. Um, now, in order to test item paths, uh, if you don't have any... Ideally, you would have some cheats. Uh, I wasn't actually able to really find any way to get a cheat to have infinite items. Um, but if you do, I highly recommend getting infinite items and giving yourself infinite bullet bills and infinite red shells, and just keep firing them along the path uh, to verify that your item paths work. Um, but if you don't have access to that, like I don't, uh, I tend to just set the items to shells only. 
Uh, and then all the other settings we don't really care about that much. Um, uh, and the reason for that is to just increase our odds of getting red shells so we can verify that red shells are following our paths correctly. Spoiler alert, they aren't. And there's not much I can do about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, particularly in the Wii U version. Basically, I'll, I'll show it here in a little bit. Um, but as you can see, we have items. We have AI. Uh, they're kind of stupid as always. Um, but we can see that they're following the road. Much as we thought they would. Uh, I've got a red shell back here. I'm going to let him get a little far ahead. Then I'm going to fire it. We're going to see it's follow the path. And then it's going to hit someone. Um, and you would kind of just want to do that at various points along the track. To test how the items work, basically. Now, here's the reason why this video is delayed. Let's see if I can replicate it here. So we get to this point in the track. We let baby Mario get up a little further ahead, and I fire. Red Shell just starts flying into oblivion over there. I don't know why. Um, I've rebuilt the item paths on this track numerous times. I've tried doing it in numerous different ways. Uh, it just seems like, as far as I can tell, um, basically, it seems like the game detects that the enemies that it needs to hit are further up the road, and something about the search area is making it skip the actual road path from where the glider ramps are, and is taking a shortcut and just flying across the map. I don't really know. Uh, I've handed it to other people who know far more about this game than I do, and we're basically all stumped. And more bafflingly, um, I ported this track over to... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe doesn't happen in 8 Deluxe, so it seems to be a Wii U issue only, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, my guess is that it has something to do with just the layout of this track being the way that it is. Just makes the items get confused because they're trying to hit enemies that are closer, further along the track. I don't know, it's hard to explain, um, but... Yeah, so just keep in mind, you may run into that issue in Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, unfortunately. And there's just not... I wasn't able to fi find a way to fix it. Um, from my experience, if you make a track that has actual decent length, you probably just won't run into this because you're probably not going to run into the situation where the next enemy will be coming at you head-on from further up the track like that. Um, but we did verify, we can see the AI is able to drive around the circuit. We can see that the red shells, other than that exception, do follow the paths correctly. Um, before we switch over, though, there's a couple other things I want to note. Or, I, not switch over, basically end this episode. I, I really wanted to have an answer to why that was happening before I release this episode. And I just never found one. So if, by all means, if somebody finds one or finds something I did wrong in this video, let me know. I've rebuilt this like three times from scratch and it happens every single time. Um, but otherwise, much like we tested shells only, I'm going to turn on mushrooms only. And we're going to go ahead and test that the AI is properly taking the little shortcut that we set up. So I'm just going to drive a little further up the road. And I'm going to just park my keister right here. I'm going to just let the AI reach this point in the race. Hopefully somebody saves a mushroom to boost across this little patch here. Otherwise it's going to be kind of boring. And I may just throw some more items down to force the issue. Um, but yeah, sometimes testing items and things like that are just... It's just a matter of hope. There they go. There, Shy Guy did it. So, it does look like that shortcut's working. You can tell most characters are not... Look like... I'm noticing on the A menu over there. 
It looked like Morton and Wario were doing some weird stuff. Um, but yeah, this shortcut works. I'm going to just look over here. Sometimes it's a matter of... Okay, so sometimes a lot of this is a matter of keeping an eye on the minimap and noticing things that are unusual. Uh, and in fact, the highlight tool... Actually, I don't have any replay cameras up, so maybe this isn't true. Um, once you have replay cameras up, which I'll try and do in a later episode, uh, we'll be able to do it. I'm going to just finish this race and see if I can get a replay camera to show. Um, but basically, a lot of the times testing AI is just trying to keep an eye on weird things happening, either on the mini-map, uh, just literally watching the race. Um, but basically, if you noticed... It seemed like some of the enemies were drifting just like that, and just drifting straight off the road. So that's a sign that we'll probably need to readjust the size of our item, or of our enemy paths along that stretch of road. Also, I just realized this didn't do the whole the race is over thing, so I guess it just doesn't do that either in eight or in, uh, eight or offline versus. Uh, but otherwise. I noticed some oddities. Uh, the AI, the video is going to look weird because weird I don't have any cameras set up. But I noticed uh, Morton, I think it was, had the issue. And so this is the great thing about the highlight tool is I noticed Morton did something weird. So I'm going to use the highlight tool to watch Morton. Uh, speed up, I think it was, was lap two. Okay, so he's fine, lap one. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh, he's using the mushroom, and so he gets a little overzealous there. Um, and I also noticed something with Wario, I think, too. So, I, I honestly, maybe I could reduce the size of the AI paths there, or the enemy path nodes, to prevent something like that. Um, but yeah, this is kind of just the testing phase of testing the AI. Just keep an eye out for weird things. Use replay cameras to watch what they do. Um, when you notice a weird thing happening. Okay, I think... Okay, he did the same thing there. I think he also f screws this turn up. Okay. Basically, the mushrooms are making the characters kind of just boost off the road. So yeah... Um, that's kind of all I'm going to be able to fix there. Uh, and the other th quick thing I just wanted to note is... Really, we probably should have tested this earlier. Um, but... In fact, you will want to test it way earlier. But make sure you test your course in 50cc and 200cc. Uh, 50cc to make sure the course is completable, and 200 to make sure that it's not just an awful ride. Um, there are items which we'll get into in a later tutorial series to kind of help with 200cc. Uh, I thought I'd mention it since we're actually in versus mode now. Um, but before I close this episode out, uh, I am going to go ahead and go in to the enemy paths here. Um, this way we just clean it up before I forget. And we'll click here. That's or might as well just go all the way from 31 to 11. And then to 31. I'm just going to set those to 150. Yeah, it's a little too small. 175. All right. Hopefully that kind of fixed our little issue we had there with the AI getting a little too crazy with the mushrooms on those turns. It's probably also happening over here, but... Yeah, so that's pretty much how enemies and item paths work, along with a little bit of how testing works for those, uh, and describing just a weird bug in Wii U version. Um, if anyone runs into that and encounters a fix for it, let me know. I, I just wasn't able to find one, unfortunately. And as I said, I was not able to replicate it in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So it seems something about the item path finding algorithm was improved between the two games. 
So thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, sorry this took so long. Hopefully the next one won't take so long. Next time, I was actually probably going to make a deluxe-only episode uh, and cover steer assist paths, since they're very closely related to what we did here today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.